U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin made an unannounced visit to Ukraine in a show of American support. Produced by Defense News and Military Times, this is the Early Bird Brief. Each morning, we bring you the defense and national security news of the day. Another $100 million drawdown using presidential drawdown authority that it'll provide additional artillery munition, additional interceptors for uh, air defense, and and a number of anti-tank weapons as well. And President Joe Biden pardons turkeys after visiting with service members ahead of Thanksgiving. I'm your host, Jonathan Lairfeld. Today is November 21st, 2023. First up, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin made an unannounced visit to Kyiv yesterday in a high-profile push to keep money and weapons flowing to Ukraine. Austin traveled to Kyiv by train from Poland. He met with President Volodymyr Zelensky and was scheduled to meet with Ukraine's defense minister and chief of staff. While there, Austin announced the Pentagon would be sending an additional $100 million in weapons to Ukraine from the existing U.S. stockpile. The package includes artillery and munitions for air defense systems and another high-mobility artillery rocket system, or HIMARS. I wanted to reassure uh, the leadership that the United States of America will continue to support Ukraine. And we talked about uh, the things that we're going to continue to do to make sure that they have what they need to be successful on the battlefield. Here's why it matters. This is Austin's second trip to Kyiv, but he's making it under far different circumstances. It came as the world's attention is drawn to the Middle East, and signs of fatigue set in with the almost 21-month Russia-Ukraine war. Austin said Ukraine's effort to defeat Russia's invasion matters to the rest of the world, and that U.S. support would continue for the long haul. Zelensky said Austin's visit was a very important signal for Ukraine. Austin's first visit was in April 2022. That was just two months after the start of the war. At the time, Ukraine was riding a wave of global rage at Moscow's invasion. Austin launched an international effort that now sees 50 countries meet monthly to coordinate on what weapons, training, and other support could be pushed to Kyiv. But the conflict in Gaza could pull attention and resources from the Ukraine fight. The U.S. has worked feverishly to keep that conflict from turning into a regional war. The U.S. has already committed two carrier strike groups, scores of fighter jets, and thousands of U.S. personnel to the Middle East. It has had to shift its force posture and conduct airstrikes against Iranian-backed militant groups that are now hitting U.S. bases in Iraq and Syria on a regular basis. To date, Ukraine has received more than $44 billion from the U.S. and more than $35 billion from other allies in weapons. That has ranged from millions of bullets to air defense systems, advanced European and U.S. battle tanks, and finally, pledges for F-16 fighter jets. But Ukraine says it still needs more. And after almost 20 months of shipping arms to Ukraine, cracks are beginning to show. Some European countries, such as Poland, have scaled back support, noting their need to maintain adequate fighting ability to defend themselves. As winter sets in, it will become more difficult for either side to make large gains due to ground conditions. That could further work against Ukraine if U.S. lawmakers perceive there's time to wait before more funds are needed. Ukraine and the U.S. expect that this winter, Russia will go after Ukraine's infrastructure again, making air defenses critical. Further complicating the support is that the Pentagon has a dwindling amount of money left in this year's budget to keep sending weapons to Ukraine, and Congress is months late on getting a new budget passed. It has not taken up a supplemental spending package that would include Ukraine aid. The Pentagon can send about $5 billion more in weapons and equipment from its own stocks, but it only has about $1 billion in funding to replace those stocks. As a result, recent announcements of weapons support have been of much smaller dollar amounts than in months past. In other news, President Joe Biden kicked off Thanksgiving week spending time with service members and sparing two turkeys from becoming someone's dinner. The turkey pardon has become an annual holiday tradition at the White House. The event marks the unofficial start of the holiday season in Washington. I hereby pardon Liberty Ann Bell. All 
right. Congratulations, birds. <laughs> the president parted the turkeys just one day after he and First Lady Jill Biden served an early Thanksgiving meal to service members and their relatives in Virginia. The Bidens helped serve dinner with service members from the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower and the USS Gerald R. Ford at Norfolk Naval Station. The event featured around 400 service members and their relatives. They also introduced an early screening of the upcoming movie Wonka. The movie is centered around the early life of Roald Dahl's fictional chocolatier Willy Wonka. Friendsgiving with the military has become a tradition for the Bidens. Last year, they dished out mashed potatoes and other sides as part of the buffet-style meal in Cherry Point, North Carolina. In 2021, the Bidens visited the Army's Fort Bragg in North Carolina for an early Thanksgiving meal in a hangar for about 250 service members and their families. Meanwhile, in Texas, former President Donald Trump served meals to National Guard soldiers, troopers, and others who will be stationed at the U.S.-Mexico border over Thanksgiving. Trump has a lead in the 2024 Republican presidential primary. Also on your radar for today, Veterans Affairs leaders are calling for an immediate halt on all foreclosures on homes financed through department loans. And they're extending a pandemic support program in an effort to help veterans struggling with housing payments. The moves were in response to an NPR report earlier this month, which found thousands of veterans in danger of losing their homes because of the end of the Veterans Assistance Partial Claim Payment Program in late 2022. Congress established the program. It allowed individuals to skip some mortgage payments during the COVID-19 pandemic with the promise of making up those payments later. But when it was canceled, some mortgage companies demanded all of the back payments be paid quickly, leading to financial problems for those families. NPR reported that about 6,000 individuals with VA home loans have already entered the foreclosure process as a result of the problems. It's unclear whether the recent VA actions will bring any relief to them. In a statement, VA Press Secretary Terrence Hayes said the department will push all mortgage companies to pause foreclosures on VA guaranteed loans through May 31, 2023. Department leaders will also extend the COVID-19 refund modification program through that date. VA leaders are also launching a new VA servicing purchase program in the coming months. It's designed to allow the department to purchase defaulted VA loans from mortgage servicers. That will allow federal officials to modify the loans and directly manage them with the goal of finding ways to keep veterans from losing their homes. And now, here are some other stories that we're hearing chirps about. Yemen's Houthi rebels seized an Israeli-linked cargo ship in a crucial Red Sea shipping route Sunday. Officials said the rebels took the ship's 25 crew members hostage, raising fears that regional tensions heightened over the Israel-Hamas war were playing out on a new maritime front. In case you missed it, a U.S. Coast Guard cutter crew seized about $21 million worth of illegal drugs this month from a stateless vessel while operating in the international waters of the Gulf of Oman. Stars and Stripes reported that Japan will move forward with a plan to buy hundreds of Tomahawk missiles after the U.S. approved a $2.35 billion deal. And federal loans to veteran-owned small businesses were up 14% last year. That's according to the Small Business Administration. The increase continues a recent trend in growth for entrepreneurs in the military community. And on this day in history, in 1916, the Britannic, the sister ship to the Titanic, sank in the Aegean Sea. The passenger liner also served as a hospital ship during World War I. It's unclear what caused the explosion that led to the sinking, but many believe the ship hit a naval mine. That's it for us this morning. To get more of the top stories and breaking news, go to defensenews.com slash EBB to subscribe to the Early Bird Brief newsletter. Please give us a like, rating, and a comment wherever you get your podcasts. And be sure to follow us on social media at defense underscore news and at military times. The Early Bird Brief is hosted by me, Jonathan Larifer, and today produced by our video team. Today's episode features stories by the Associated Press and Leo Shane III. Our editor-in-chief is Mike Bruce. Have a 